Hello everyone, Sandre here, and today I'm going to answer some questions that James Alsop have asked regarding climate change. This video is over a year old, but I thought it was worth responding to anyway. You see, when most people talk about climate change, they're really only asking two questions. Are humans causing it? And what can humans do to stop it? But I feel like that is an incomplete assessment of the complicated question that climate change is. In my opinion, there are really five essential questions that need to be asked when talking about climate change. Some of these questions are scientific, some are political, some involve geopolitical strategy, but they're all important. And I recognize that people will probably disagree with some of the arguments I present in this video, and that's fine. As long as you can expand the way you think about climate change and climate policy, I'll consider this video to be a success, and that's all I can ask for. With that being said, let's get into it. The first essential question we have to ask about climate change is, is the climate even changing? The answer to this one is pretty obvious. Yes, the climate is changing, and the climate has always been changing. As NASA states on their website, as long as we've been able to observe data regarding the climate, we've seen fluctuations, we've seen shifts, we've seen changes in the world's climate. Has the Earth's climate been changing? Yes. Has it always been changing? Yes. Will it continue to change even without human intervention? Yes. You see, the problem isn't that there's climate change. There would be climate change even without human activity. However, the Earth has never experienced such a drastic change in such a short time scale regarding its climate, except for some very select few times in history under much more extreme conditions. Basically, the only times before when we've seen even greater changes in climate, even quicker than we see now, have been scenarios where you have a supervolcano erupting, or a comet or asteroid striking the Earth or when the natural rotation of the tilt of the Earth is in a certain position which happens during regular intervals, or if the Sun increases its solar output. Only during those events have we seen a change in climate that is quicker and more drastic than what we are seeing now. And guess what, James? In the last 150 years, there has been no supervolcanic eruption. The Sun isn't hotter than it usually is. The tilt of the Earth is in a position where we should see a slight cooling instead of a warming, and there hasn't been a fucking comet or asteroid striking into the Earth. Besides, when it comes to the volcanic eruption and a comet or asteroid striking the Earth, this would actually lead to a decrease in temperature and not a warming. So the only two factors we need to think about here are solar output as well as the tilt of the Earth. And again, those two things just can't explain the warming we're seeing at such a quick rate. Again, it's not the warming itself that is the problem, but the fact that it's happening so quickly. And for thousands of years, Global temperature has been what we could describe as cyclical. Things get colder, and then things get warmer. And then that cycle repeats itself. And unless someone wants to argue that humans were using internal combustion and mass agriculture techniques 200,000 years ago, it's pretty evident that most of these changes happen naturally. Some of the people who deny climate change bring up the fact that there was a warming period during the Middle Ages, before we had the Industrial Revolution. And that's true, we did have a warming period during that time. What you gotta keep in mind though is during these times when you have a slight warming of the Earth, it usually takes thousands of years to see a global change in average temperature. What we are seeing now has only taken 150 years, not a thousand. Face it, this is not a natural warming period. Now, as far as recent changes in the climate, Yes, it's fair to say that the Earth has been getting warmer. Since 1960, according to NASA, global average temperature has increased about 0.7 Celsius. And in the context of the years 1860 to 2017, that looks huge. But it is important to keep in mind that we have seen larger fluctuations throughout history. However, those fluctuations usually take thousands of years and not just a few hundred. So is the climate changing? Yes. But that brings us to our second question. What's causing it? As previously mentioned, the Earth's climate has been changing for thousands of years. The Industrial Revolution really started in the 1800s, for example, and automobiles were first accessible to American consumers in approximately the 1950s. For the purposes of this presentation, we'll use data from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC. In a 2007 report, they found that climate change is being caused primarily by two things. One, solar flares, and two, human activity. Again, we don't see an increased solar activity right now. The sun's activity does not explain the recent phenomena of climate change. 
And by human activity, they mean almost entirely greenhouse gas emissions. We'll talk about that later. One of the problems with the argument that increases in CO2 or carbon dioxide emissions are driving global temperature increases is that when you observe the correlation between global temperature and CO2 in the atmosphere throughout history, periods of warming tend to precede periods of intense CO2 in the atmosphere. In other words, historically, periods of warming happen before periods of high CO2. Many ecologists, including the former director of Greenpeace, argue that the relationship between CO2 gases and global warming is not quite as causal as many researchers suggest. I do not give a flying fuck what a person from Greenpeace has to say just because they were a member of Greenpeace. By the way, the guy you're referencing, he's actually nowadays a lobbyist for the chemical and fossil industry. So he's hardly neutral in all of this. Now I'm going to explain why the correlation between CO2 levels in the atmosphere and the average global temperature of the Earth doesn't sync up exactly in a graph. You see, a very tiny amount of CO2 and any other greenhouse gas like methane, as well as water vapor, will make the Earth's surface about 30 Celsius or 54 Fahrenheit warmer than it would be without them. Now, we have added about 42% more CO2. However, if you think this means that the temperature will go up by 42% as well, then you're sadly mistaken and you're committing one of the biggest mistakes regarding climate science. Simply doubling the amount of a gas like CO2 does not in of itself double the greenhouse effect that that gas brings to the atmosphere. Looking at this graph, you can see that as the CO2 goes up, it doesn't increase the temperature in sync, like I mentioned before. According to an IPCC report, if we increase the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere to twice as bad it was before the Industrial Revolution, we would see somewhere between 2 and 4.5 degrees Celsius of an increase in average global temperature. As of now, the global temperature has increased by about 0.8 degrees Celsius or 1.4 Fahrenheit. A very basic explanation as to why you don't see a synchronicity between the warming of the climate and the amount of CO2 in the air has to do with the oceans. You see, most of the heat that is produced by the added CO2 actually goes into the oceans. As of right now, the heat is transported from the ocean's surface to the deeper waters below. This actually leads to a bit of a perceived paradox when it comes to the ocean surface temperature with all of this global warming. The surface, because of this effect, is actually going to get cooler. This reduces humidity in the air on a global level, of course, and air temperatures as such are therefore going to go down. This very simply explains why the rate that surface temperatures go up is not inherently proportional to the rate of CO2 emissions. But make no mistake, the ocean is acting sort of like a buffer when it comes to heating up the planet. Eventually this buffer is going to fail. There's only so much added heat from increased CO2 amounts in the air that the ocean can capture, if you will. The funny thing here though, James, is you claim to be using NASA's own sources to question climate change. But I'm looking at NASA's own source right here, and it actually explains why in a graph the average CO2 level in the atmosphere doesn't line up exactly with the average global temperature. Interestingly enough, however, they don't include human emissions like breathing on this chart. Think about that for a second. If there were fewer people in the world, there would be fewer people emitting carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Oh, for fuck's sake. James, did you pay any goddamn attention in high school during biology and chemistry class? Have you heard of something called a carbon cycle? The reason it's asinine to include carbon dioxide that any organism breathes out in any calculation regarding the rise of CO2 in the atmosphere is because that carbon in that carbon dioxide originates from sugar molecules originally produced by plants from other carbon dioxide molecules that's already in the cycle. Basically, you can breathe out as much as you want, James. You're not going to increase as an organism on this planet the amount of CO2 it's all part of a closed cycle. Get it? Jesus fucking Christ, this is ignorant. Yet, almost all of these environmentalist types seem to be the same people supporting the notion that the US needs to send foreign food aid to Africa to keep millions of third world citizens alive. Really makes you think. Hey dude, you're more likely to promote genocide as far as I understand than any fucking environmentalist that I know. Just say it. You know what, James? Let's say that there was a slight environmental damage from sending aid to nations where people are starving. You know what I say? Do it anyway. 
I know you're a self-proclaimed white nationalist and you probably don't even regard these people as proper humans, but guess what? I don't want people to starve. And to me, as well as established genetical science, they are just as much of human beings as you and I. Let's try and prevent people from starving, hmm? But that's beside the point. So the long answer to this question is maybe. Of course humans can take some steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, that's a given. But we aren't certain to what extent these greenhouse gas emissions are driving up global temperatures and causing a shift in global climate. Actually, we are, James. Your arguments previously in this video hangs on the fact that you showed data regarding the increase of the temperature on Earth, as well as increases of CO2 in the atmosphere. What are you even on about? You're literally contradicting your main points in the beginning of the video. What the fuck, James? Is it the government's job to act on this? Now, I know this question may seem obnoxiously libertarian to some people, but I think it is important to ask the question, whether or not it's the US government's job to act on a problem that is, by its very nature, global. You see, if the world revolved around a single government, no, it wouldn't make sense. But you see, all nations have their own government. Well, I guess unless we're talking about Somalia, or maybe they have a government these days, I, I don't fucking know, and that's beside the point. The point is this, this is a global problem and no single government can solve it on their own. Therefore, it makes sense that all the world's governments come together and help each other on this issue. It makes just as much sense as a single government fixing an environmental issue that is located within the country's own borders. After all, let's say that there's an oil spill outside of Alaska. If we were to use your reasoning here, we could say it's no bother letting the local governments clean it up because the local government in this Alaskan town that's been affected can't possibly clean it up. Well, hello, you have the state fucking authorities who can do that though. We have the resources to do that. So to answer your question, why should a government get involved in a global phenomena? Because it's not just that government doing something about it, that's why. Ever heard of something called cooperation between nations? It's possible, you know? Is it the job of the US government to intervene when individuals and corporations emit greenhouse gases? From where does government derive that authority? Let's say that you live next door to a river. And let's say that you and your kids like to take a swim in that river. Let's say that someone decides to pour a bunch of fucking mercury from their pelt production into that river, where you and the kids like to take a swim. What authority would the local police have to arrest the people responsible for dropping a bunch of mercury into the river? Hmm. How about the fact that innocent people, against their awareness, are being poisoned? Now you take that fact, James, and you apply it to a global level. And there's your answer. Why should the world's governments do something about climate change? Because it's an actual problem that's going to cause a bunch of suffering to a bunch of innocent people. That's where the authority is derived from. And finally, there's a very important but very inconvenient question that must be asked. Even if the US government were to act, would that solve the problem? A lot of people immediately jump from the first supposition that climate change is happening and humans are causing it to this idea that government must take action. Government must legislate our way out of this problem. And I think that's a mistake. However, multiple governments can combined make a great effort. Why are you showing Bill Nye? He's not a scientist. He's a mechanical engineer, and honestly, he's not even taken that fucking seriously by anyone in STEM. By the way, Bill Nye never actually said that people should be jailed for questioning climate change. That's, what do you call it again? Fake news. Ah yeah, that's the word. There's an article that I've linked where you can read more about it. Anyway, there's a little bit left of his video, but I'm not gonna bother responding to it. I think I've made my point so far. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like a comment, as well as subscribe. It really helps the channel. And by the way, don't forget to click that bell. Otherwise, you may not be notified. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye!